Hi, it's Mr. H, and today we're going to work on slurring on line 95 smooth operator and line 96 gliding along. We're going to use the clarinet today, but this will help you on just about any instrument. You might have to just look at your own music. We're going to start on line 96, even though 95 smooth operator comes first in the book. Most people I teach find it easier to do 96. And first I'll demonstrate it for you. I'm going to put on my metronome. <clears throat> One, two, ready, go. This is 95 Smooth Operator. One, two, ready, go. So what is a slur? A slur is a curved line that connects notes of different pitches. If you look closely at a slur, you may think it looks like a tie, and that's because it does. A slur and a tie look almost exactly the same. And if you compare it to uh, the first time we learned about ties, maybe in line 59, fit to be tied, um, you'll see that two notes connected, uh, we tongue the first note and we hold out. So if 95 were tied, if I didn't change fingerings, it would sound like this. One, two, ready, go. That was just the first four measures of 95 as if it was a tie. Because it's a slur, I'm going to blow the same way, I'm going to tongue the same way, but I'm going to move my finger, okay, for the different notes. And because I'm changing notes, it's not a tie anymore, it's a slur. Ready, go. When you tongue notes, we're used to our tongue keeping the beat. So if I look at the last four measures of smooth operator, you'll, and I don't slur them if I tongue every note. We tend to think of our tongue as playing the quarter notes, but really our fingers are also playing the quarter notes. So in order to have good slurs, we need to think of having rhythmic fingers. I like to think of just robot, even fingers, like a metronome, as I'm changing notes during slurs. Because I don't want the slur to make my notes go faster or slower. I don't want it to sound like <laughs> that, that wouldn't be correct. I want it to stay nice and even with the metronome, and my fingers now are in charge of keeping a steady beat. So once again, if we look at the last four measures of 95, I'm going to put on my metronome. This is incorrect. This would be the wrong way to do it, where I just go really fast on the slurs. Okay, not right. We want even. First, tongue every note. and then I'll put in the slurs. And so hopefully you notice that I'm keeping a very steady beat with my fingers and then my tongue is uh, just keeping the notes. If we go below that to line 96 and we do just the quarter note part of that where you have four quarter notes tied together, this would be four measures from the end of it, it's the same notes we just played in 95. But now we have to slur 
four notes together. Again, I'm going to keep my fingers super even like, like a machine. Okay, another thing to notice when I did that was I did that all on one breath. So I wasn't breathing for uh, in between slurs. There are a couple ways that I like to introduce tonguing or practice tonguing. And if you're having trouble tonguing and you need to review this, don't worry about playing a line of music or anything. Just worry about getting used to tonguing your notes. One way to uh, practice tonguing, you know, just from the beginning, is blow. So you want to be able to blow a really long note and you would you can put your tongue like you're saying foo. And hopefully you can tell that my air keeps going. I'm moving my tongue, but my air isn't really stopping. I'm blowing and moving my tongue at the same time. Okay. Now when we tongue on our instruments, we don't actually put our tongue in between our lips, but this is a good way to get your tongue working and pretty close to where it belongs. So practice that for a, a little bit. Then uh, another thing I like to do is try the same thing. <clears throat> Again, if you're playing the clarinet or a reed instrument, you will your tongue will move the same way, but it will touch right at the very tip of the reed. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing. I'm going to take one big breath. And I'm just trying to keep everything the same. I'm trying to keep steady air and a steady mouth and just move my tongue back and forth and touch the reed. On the trumpet, it sounds like this. Again, I'm not actually putting my tongue between my lips, just to be clear. My tongue goes behind uh, my teeth, and it's touching my teeth and gum at the same time. Another way to get used to tonguing is to start with your tongue on the reed and blow. So my tongue is on the reed, and I'm going to blow. And you might be able to tell that I'm blowing, but because my tongue's touching the reed, the reed's not vibrating, and therefore it doesn't make any sound. So the air's kind of building up. You might hear a little bit of air escaping, but basically I'm blowing with my tongue on the reed, not letting the reed vibrate, and no sound comes out. So now I'm gonna do the same thing and then take my tongue off the reed. So I blew for a while with my tongue on the reed and then took it off. And as soon as I took my tongue, as soon as my tongue went off the reed, I made sound. And that will work on any instrument, really. It'll work on uh, reed instruments and non-reed instruments. So now I'm going to have my tongue touching my teeth and gum. nothing comes out and the air sort of building up. I'm going to do the same thing and release my tongue. Oops. So if you, I'm just switching back and forth here just to show you that it's basically the same on any instrument. So if you notice, I'm doing, I'm sort of tonguing in slow motion there. I'm leaving my tongue on the reed, and then I'm taking my tongue off, and then I'm putting it on the reed or teeth, whichever instrument you play. So this whole time I'm blowing. I'm going to demonstrate one more time, and I'll be blowing the whole time. Okay, 
the whole time I'm blowing and I'm just getting used to moving my tongue, having my tongue in position to stop the air or stop the reed from vibrating and then taking my tongue off. So it is not a bad idea to think about tonguing in reverse, actually pulling your tongue off the reed or off of your teeth. Hopefully that helps and uh, good luck working on line 95 and 96. Okay, good try. So if you're still having difficulty, don't worry about it. Just try again. It can be helpful to go slower and definitely want to practice small sections. Just work on the parts that are giving you trouble. Uh, if it's still not going well, take a break. Maybe go on to a different song and come back to this one again tomorrow. It can take many practice sessions to learn something difficult. That's why we need to practice numerous times a, a week rather than one long session. And always remember, the more you practice, the better you get. See you next time.